Hey folks, welcome back to Only the Best Fantasy Novels. My name is Robin, and today I want to talk about The Bands of Mourning, which is the sixth Ms. Barn novel overall, the third in Era 2, or the second series, the second sub-series of it overall. And in a nutshell, this is a penultimate novel that kind of reads very much like a penultimate novel. It does a lot of stage setting while also having its own kind of semi-contained story. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. So what is The Bands of Mourning about? Um, it's been a little bit since the events of Shadows of Self and life goes on, basically. We have, um, and then suddenly a Akandra comes to Wax and a Akandra comes to, ac to Wax and asks for help. Basically, one of their number, who is um, he, who goes exploring, returned back to the city with in, in a pretty traumatized state, um, kind of unable to to communicate like what they went through, and they did, but they they were able to provide some clues, and the clues they provided pointed towards two things. Number one is the bands of mourning, which are the meta minds used by the Lord Ruler. Um, that like they have their own mythos around them now but supposedly they're, they're meta minds that will grant anyone who wears them the powers of both a full Mesborn and a full Ferrochemist and the second thing that the, the second clue that the Kandra brought back without being able to like provide any context, context with is a picture showing the set with specifically Wax's sister being held captive. So these two stories are immediately intertwined and um, that's kind of how Wax gets drawn into this adventure. Um, but given the events of Shadows of Self, like he wants nothing to do with the Kanja's agenda um, and with Harmony's agenda in general. He wants to, he basically just wants to go out and find out what's going on with his sister and the bands of mourning can remain lost for all he cares. So there's that. Um, but essentially that's how Wax and the crew, they depart, they go to a new city, um, which provides its own context in the aforementioned um, groundwork being laid for the final um, for the final novel. So yeah, that's pretty, pretty much it, and things get hairy from there. So yeah, like I said, first and foremost, this book just feels like a lot of groundwork being laid. Like... Um, there's a massive, massive expansion of the of the lore of everything we thought we know, we we knew so far. So one of the biggest teases in this new series is that um, at the end of at the end of um, at the end of Mistborn, like we knew about eleven metals, but suddenly at the start of this new series, we we knew about sixteen metals, and some of them we haven't quite really found out more about yet. Well, this is the book where you find out more about them. And the ramification, they, they're little understood, and the ramifications to their application are huge. So that's where we get quite a bit of lore expansion going on. Um, and just like a little more Cosmere tangential stuff happening in, in, in the interim, because we do, like the, the set has these massive plans going on. Um, and they do kind of, touch on some things within the larger Cosmere that begin to kind of leak into the story. There, there is that thread that Marassi has been pulling on since the end of book one where um, like she she has these concerns over a particular um, a particular thread that has remained very far in the background for, so far. And then first and foremost we learn just more about the existing world in general. Like one of the biggest teases in at the end of the Hero of Ages, it, it finally pays off in this book. And it wasn't just a tease there, like um, the broadsheets that are included, which are literally just um, full page kind of pictures that are just like portions of a newspaper that are included in these books. You need to read all those things because they, they always, each one includes at least one tiny thing that's a seed that's being laid for something if not in this book the next book and um, a tease was placed here that it pays off in this book with once again the world expanding around wax and, and the crew 
So um, so there's that. Just just like massive, massive world expansion going on. Right when you think Sans and Uncovering enough, um, had, had built quite a rich and interesting world, there, there's always more that's going on. So there's that. In terms of the actual story, as with all the Mistborn stories to date, like this one, it has quite a lot of action. It has that adventurous feel to it. And just a lot of mystery. Like the 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 first one was a bit more um, shoot 'em up action type. The second one had a bit more of a mystery element to it, as the crew was trying to unravel the um, the plan of the of the antagonist. And it's the same thing in this one. They're just trying to unravel the mystery of what what the set is up to and what's going on with like. W w what this Kanjo endured and where where that leads and where the bands of mourning may potentially be. So a lot of mystery, a lot of adventure. Um, the characters they just continue to develop in just great ways, great ways. Like um in this one, first and foremost, Wax and Steris' story kicks off like like I mentioned, I, I liked where things were going in the second book, but this one it just stole the show for me. Like I, I I, I normally don't care much about romance, like it's there, okay fine, whatever, but um, like I enjoyed this one, I enjoyed seeing how, how the characters have just grown and changed and um, and evolved together and I was dear fit, I was just dear fit. And this one we also have Wax trying to, you know, address the trauma in his past the, that got reopened in the previous book and um, Try, try to address his issues with his personal issues when he's dealing with a situation that he knows has to be um, dealt with for the greater good and um, and then we have Wayne who uh, as arguably the most childish character in here he um, he exhibits some interesting character growth in the most Wayne way possible and then we have Marassi. Marassi in similar to Wayne, like she kind of moves past where she was in the previous book, and to, to the point where she has um she has someone in her life now that or or a potential someone in her life now, and like it'll be interesting to see where that leads, because I feel like that 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 one may give us a little bit bit more insight into one of the revelations of this book, um but yeah, so that that's kind of where the we are with the characters, um. And one of the things that, uh, another thread that happens with the characters is something that happens with the major antagonist, Mr. Suit. And um, honestly, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Because it's something that works sometimes, not always. And I'm not sure if it worked for me in this one. How his particular story plays out. Um, and what that means for the next book. But... Um, yeah, I am there for it. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Like I, I kind of feel like the the stage that was set with him and Wax going into the final book was um is is a wee bit contrived. Um, but you know it is what it is. Like one of the like one of the things I've always kind of kept at the at the back of my mind is um the main reason why Wax in particular was chosen, why he is the protagonist of this story, is Aside from being a twin born, which is an, an, a particularly rare combination at that, he um, he's literally the descendant of one of the crew members that Sazed knew from when from his days before he ascended. So like um, maybe that's why he chose Wax, right? Maybe he sees something of Breeze, and maybe that nostalgia for Breeze is why he chose Wax to to help him with his um with with the situations that he's dealing with. Um, when, he, when he needs like when he needs assistance that the Kanjo can't necessarily provide so there's that um, but th this kind of feels like there's a bit more um, a bit more do sex machina going on in the background with this particular choice but you know what it is what it is um, and then there we have the finale which like just completely blows everything clean out of the water um, I'm not sure I feel about that to be honest, but like I said, it does very much set the stage for where these books are going to go, where the finale is headed. Um, 
I think it all, all in all I think this might have been like an okay entry into the series. It's not my personal favorite. Like I um I like some parts of it, but as a whole I just it, it just quite didn't it didn't quite work for me. Um that all of that being said, I still did enjoy the majority of this book. It's just something some things about it just didn't vibe with me. But that's my personal feelings. Like I appreciate what's been going on. Like like the different things that were built on in this book and the different things that were set. And we know how Sanderson rolls at this point. Like the the, the fact that this book was a lot of stage setting tells me that he has some interesting things planned for us in the final um the final novel, The Lost Metal. So it'll be interesting to see how that book holds up on a reread because I think I um I think I enjoyed it before. I, I enjoyed all the Miss Born books the first time I read them, but I think this time around I'm just appreciating them a bit more. Um, and that, that's so far that's kind of been like how I feel about this series in general. Like I appreciate a lot of the things what it's doing, but so far the only one that's really like the only th this one is kind of where the like I I enjoyed the fourth the fourth book. I enjoyed the fifth book. This one is it kind of flagged off for me, um, but yeah. And even all that being said, still a, still a very interesting read because of course Sanderson being Sanderson, and um, yeah. If you made it this far into the video, I get I the, thank you very much for watching. But I think that's where I'll call it for my thoughts on the bands of mourning and um, holy crap that ending, like it was teased but. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, yeah, anyway, that's all I have to say about Bands of Morning. I'll see you when I see you.